Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Dr. Mensa Odebill turns 50, and we're thinking about all the smart things he's learned in his life. From hugs with family to big wins, every moment teaches us something important. Life's like a big song. We're all different, but we're all singing together, even when things get tough. Life's a mix of good times and tough ones, but together, they make a beautiful picture. Let's remember the things Dr. Mensa Odebill's learned. They can light up our way to a better future. Number 14. 14th lesson I've learned is that God's word is life. I must not beat people on the head with it. God's word is life. I don't have to beat people on the head with it. You know, when we started preaching, it was fashionable. And I see young preachers who still do the same. It's, we call it blasting. You blast people, you, you, you hammer them, you condemn them. What you did, you are this and you are that. And sometimes you really, really put people down with God's word. But I got to know God's word is life. It's not death. It's the ministry of life. That when I stand here to preach, people don't want death. They want life. Even when I'm talking about sin, I must not talk about sin so much that people feel hopeless that there's no way out. I must point out what is wrong. I must make people aware of what is wrong. I must make people know they are going wayward. But I must also make them know there is a way out. I don't just come here and condemn then the women dress like this and the men dress like this and you put lipstick on your mouth like a parrot and, and all of that. <laughs> I mean, People don't go to church to hear them as if somebody is whipping them every Sunday, every Sunday. Yes, you must hear something that challenges you. But that thing must help you to find a way out. And that's why almost every message I preach, there is a how-to process. If I say you must do something, I'm going to try to give you three steps to doing it. Two steps to doing it. Do this, do that, do that. Not leave you with a condemnation and you finding no way of improvement. There must always be a way to improve. God's word is life. We are ministers of life. We are ministers of the spirit. Not of the letter. The letter kills. But the spirit gives life. People are carrying heavy burdens already. They fear God already. I must help them to resolve the conflicts of their life. That's my job. That's what God has called me to do. Not to beat your head with God's word. And that's why you'll not hear me just condemning people and condemning the way people dress and, and criticizing people and speaking evil of people. And that's why I don't condemn preachers. Other preachers may be doing something wrong, but I'm not going to use the word of God to hit them on the head. I may teach what I think is right, but I'm not going to name people and criticize them because that's not my job. I'm a preacher of life, of encouragement, of, of, of upliftment, and I must not beat people on the head with God's word. Number 15. I hope I can finish. I think I'm on track. I think we'll do it. 15 point. I must allow my works to do the talking for me instead of my mouth. I must allow. I have to learn that. It's a lesson I learned in life that just keep quiet. Do it. And after you've done it, show it. Don't just talk about what you're going to do. Talk about what has been done. And many times, I don't want people to have a high opinion about me and be disappointed by the reality. I would rather that people have a low opinion about me and are shocked by the reality. That, that it makes all of us feel good, you know, when somebody thinks you are nothing and then he sees, wow, you did that, you did that, and he says, oh yeah, you know, 
Small, small. Small, small. <laughs> Let your works speak for you. Don't shoot your mouth. Let the works speak. And believe you me, good works will not be hidden. Good works will not be hidden. If you have done it, if it is clear, you don't need advertisement. It will be seen. People will see it. People will testify. People will acknowledge it. And sometimes we are too much in a hurry to look for acceptance. You want recognition. All of us have that problem. Recognition. Ah, nobody sees me. Nobody recognizes me. I do great things and they pass me by and they give it to other people. If you do great things, nobody will pass you by. Don't you think all of us are looking for people who do great things? Yes, we are. And if you're really good, nobody will pass you by except somebody who hates you. But most people will acknowledge what you have done. They will see it. And they will acknowledge it. So don't talk up much about it. Let your work speak. And it's a principle I, I try to honor. To just produce the works. Do it. And let the works advertise. I want that when I'm in the newspaper or when I'm the news, it's not based on just what I'm saying, but what I'm doing or what I've done. So if I am on the paper, it's because I've done this or I'm doing that or I'm helping here or I'm providing a solution here, not just that I'm smiling with my nice face on TV just to show my face. No, let your work do the talking, not your mouth. Number 16. My name is more important than my title. The early days of ministry, I thought the title was more important than the name. But the more I grow up, the more I realize the titles are nothing. You can call yourself any title. Apostle, senior apostle, chief apostle. (laughs) Senior apostle, Paul. I mean, whatever. Call yourself just... Christ square root. I mean, it's up to you. You can call yourself Pope, Papa, Nana, Gaga, Didi. <laughs> it, it's nonsense. Titles are nonsense. Because whatever title you put on yourself, people will want you to defend it. If you go around and say, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world, and Mike Tyson will show up. So when you pick titles that do not reflect your achievement and you are under pressure to produce, commensurate with the title you've given yourself and you fall short, you become hollow, empty. But when you are doing the work without the title, people see your true worth. Don't go chasing titles and trying to pile accolades on yourself and I'm chief doctor this and I'm, I'm uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, the church world these days has got quite an interesting uh, array. I think somebody should do a nice uh, documentary on church titles. They're quite interesting. You know, and people call themselves, somebody starts a church, he has three little lizards and five cockroaches in the classroom and he calls himself bishop bishop over what what are you bishoping i'm an apostle a prophet that's the newest one everybody starts a ministry prophet because it's they feel it's an easy way it's an easy way to success If I get a title, then people would know who I am. If you're a prophet, be a prophet. The title is not what does the job. It's what you do that does the job. If you're a prophet, forget about the title. Do the job. People will give you the honor. Not because you have the title, but because you perform. Because you deliver results. Don't go call, you start a company, there's nothing you are directing, you a managing director. Now, if there's a managing director, then there must be directors who are not managing. 
And if you are managing director, there must be managers that the managing director is directing. Now your whole office is in your, in your suitcase. <laughs> and you have only some, some uh, agidi and uh, your kegari and, and, and a comb in your suitcase. And that's all you have in one single file. That's your office. Managing director. <laughs> Just call yourself Mr. So-and-so. I supply goods. Mr. So-and-so, I'm a salesman. I sell. And grow. You see, when, when you take the title out, then you know I must work to earn the what I'm looking for. Not you pile something on you you haven't fought for, you haven't worked for, and you have no capability to defend. My name is more important than my title. Tell the person that's you, my name is more important than my title. And whilst I'm here, can I speak to the women a little? I mean, this missus thing, missus, most of you. I am missus. I am, I am missus. So you didn't have a life until somebody married you. Woe on you if you call had a wedding and don't add missus. Uh, please, I am missus. <laughs> These days, we, they even put the missus in bracket. Your name is more important than the title. <laughs> and the one I hate most is the doctor missus and the professor missus. Doctor so and so, where, where is them? Everybody knows you are married. You are married to your husband, not to everybody. <laughs> Mrs. is a domestic title, it's not an official title. <laughs> Keep it out of the official documents and just make it. All right, number 17. 17 lesson I've learned if I keep my hands clean. I can always eat at God's table. If I keep my hands clean, I can always eat at God's table. I'm convinced that you cannot live in sin and be blessed by God. If you live in sin and things are going right, God is not the one blessing you because he cannot bless sin. So it's probably the devil is doing something in your life because sin only opens the door for the devil. Keep your hands clean. Then you can enjoy God's favor and God's blessing and God's abundance. Because it's only the blessing of the Lord that brings riches without sorrow. If Satan blesses you, he's going to demand your allegiance. And he's going to demand payment one of these days. Keep your hands clean. And God will bless you. God will load you with benefits. It doesn't mean that when you live holy for one month, it's God, this month I've been very holy. Where is the blessing? No. Sometimes you may not even see the blessing in your lifetime. But you see it in your children. Or your grandchildren. Because the blessing of God is not just something that material. It is an impartation. It is a favor. It's open door that God gives you. And he blesses those who are associated with you. Abraham was blessed with his descendants. God wants to bless you with your descendants, your children, your children's children. Keep clean hands. Don't soil your hands. Don't muddy your hands. Don't try to live anyway, anyhow, and still pray that God blesses you. If you keep your hands clean, you can always eat at God's table. You will have his blessing. Number 18. Time waits for no one. It moves on whether I use it or waste it. That's an important lesson. Not too long ago, I was 20. Time flies. Time, I'm telling you, time flies. 
That's why you can mark time and not know time is moving. And before you realize you've been doing the same thing for 30 years. Or staying in the same place for 50 years. Time will move on whether you waste it or not. One second at a time, one minute at a time, one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade, two decades, three decades, four decades. Before you realize you are still living in the same room you were born in. Because you always say, oh, I'll do it one day. I will save one day. I will move out one day. I'm waiting. The time will come. Time waits for no one and time never comes. It moves. Number 19. Lesson. Paying attention to detail results in excellent performance. If I am careful to focus on the little things and work out the little details, my work will always stand out. It will always be excellent. It will always be acknowledged. So I never stop working on my work. Even my sermon, when I'm preaching, or when I'm preparing a sermon, I keep working and working until the last minute when I'm preaching it. And sometimes between the first service and second service, I go back to work again. Because something didn't work well in the first service, I go and tweak it and try to put it together. And if I have to preach that same message again, I'll work on it again. Because you have to always pay attention to detail. That's how you reach perfection and you have excellent performance. Number 20. When God opens the door, I must boldly enter in. Most doors that God opens have got adversaries, problems around them. And if I'm waiting for the situation, everything to normalize, I may never act. But when I know this is an open door, I'm prepared for this, I'm ready for it, I have the gifts, and this is a chance God has given to me, the timing is right, but there are difficulties, I still have to enter in. I still have to be bold and take a step. And it's only when you are bold that you enter into the opportunities God gives you. Number 21, it's related to 20. When God shuts a door, I must wisely turn around. When God shuts a door, I must wisely turn around. The same God who opens doors also shuts doors. When you know a door is shut, don't be banging on it. Move away. Don't beg because it won't open. Doors don't open because you begged. If you miss the opportunity, be wise. Turn around. God will open another one for you. But don't waste your time on missed chances. Regretting over missed chances. Blaming yourself for missed chances. Oh, I should have done it. I, mi- I missed that. Some, some people are grown and they're still sad because of somebody they didn't marry. It's true. Ah, and some are even married now in, in their mind. Ah, if I had ah, if I had married that person, you didn't marry him. You didn't marry her. Oh, if if I had paid attention to my mathematics in secondary school, unfortunately, you got nine. Move on, get over it, do something with your life. You cannot cry over missed opportunities. They are missed. Be wise, turn around and look for something new to do with your life. Because the good thing is that there will always be new doors opening along the line. You missed it here, but something else will open. We don't always live the perfect life that we want to live. We don't always do the right things we want to live. Do. Sometimes we miss opportunities. And when you do, have the wisdom to turn around. And move on with your life. Move on with your life. You didn't get the contract. Don't cry. Don't, yes, cry a little, but move on. Move on. The girl you want to marry has married somebody else. Don't look at the wedding invitation and begin to curse in the name of Jesus. It will not come on. It will come on. Just move on. Move on with your life. Move on. Turn around. Move on. The door is closed. The girl is married. The boy is married. 
It's gone. What else? Move on. And sometimes we get stuck in one place and pray, oh God, tend there. Oh God, it's gone. Know when something is gone and move on. When a door shuts, be wise and turn around. Otherwise, you're going to waste precious time trying to deal with something that you can deal with. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. But thank God, you will open another door. The final for today is number 22. I can't do everything in one day. What I start today, I can continue tomorrow. And that means part two is coming next week. (laughs) And that's an important lesson in life. You can't do everything. You can't put everything in one moment. An opportunity happens, you want to get your final kill from it. One business opportunity, you want to use it to uh, to solve all your problems. Uh, one job you've got you wanted to solve all your problems so you have employed everybody your uncle, your auntie, your nephew your nieces, everybody should come and enjoy some because the door has opened you can't do that you can't do that there are limited limited resources that a particular opportunity can serve you and so you have to know that you can do everything one day I can't preach all my messages today I have to learn to shut the door shut my computer and we'll continue next week god bless you amen have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!